Welcome back gamers to another predecessor video. Today is another VOD review of a game that I have played. I am of course the Argus in this game. I know last time I did a, a, a VOD review when I'm playing jungle. So this time I decided let's do one for mid lane. And I am playing a little bit of Argus into a Countess. Now this matchup is actually pretty volatile, but I would say before first base, and maybe before second base too, it's of course Ar Argus favored. These champs do both want to scale though, so there's that going for them. They both scale pretty well. Uh, the way you see me uh, position for wave is between her and between the minion. However, I'm not trying to hit her until I see that my wave is pushing. Because if I'm hitting the Countess, before, I, before the fact that I realize that I have more minions and the wave's already pushing, then I will start uh, having the wave go to her, and that's just not gonna be worth it for me. So this is like a little bit of wave management here where like, I'm trying to zone her off, but not really at the same time. Like if she goes on me, of course I will have to fight her and it's not something that she wants. She doesn't wanna go on me because it wouldn't be a winning trade. But at the same time, I'm just sitting there and not really wanting to hit her at the same time. It's like, I just wanna deny as much CS early as possible. To a point where like she will not be able to farm as well as she wants now she made a mistake on level two on the second wave where she just all in the second wave allowing me to have this nice little freeze towards the side of my jungle she's a countess mid lane so you cannot be doing this you know that uh, if you try to uh, play aggressive on your second wave there's a good chance that you're gonna be out of position and she will be out of position here we do uh, layer rcc very well you see me there holding the stun until she queues back or does whatever she wants with the queue. There's no rush for this play because it is a guaranteed kill without us having to waste any blinks if we just play it normal, precise, and just not rush things, right? So that allows me to shove one wave and also shove the next wave. She also gets to miss some CS. So if we uh, press stab here, I am sitting at 20 CS. She's sitting at 13 CS. Uh, she also does not get a really good buy here. She only gets two books. And after I clear wave, instead of basing, I decide to hit dual lane. Try to make that uh, this this lane a bit harder for the enemy dual lane. We we stun the dock. Dock uh, manages to uh, escape out with the face pull and also uh, his uh, move speed uh, ability. Uh, we nearly killed the phase, so maybe I should have just uh, targeted the phase there. It, it honestly would probably have resulted in a kill if we did target the phase. But in the end, it's not it's not going to change too much for what we just did now. Because if you look at it, dual lane had to base. And my dual lane over here, if uh, my mouse will work, that's a, that's a cannon wave under the tier one on dual lane. So uh, my dual lane should be ahead in CS as well. If we look at dual lane CS, it's 36 CS to 16 CS. So yeah, uh, they probably were already winning early with CS. So they probably like had five to 10 more CS, but with my gang that made it to close to 20 pretty much. Let's go back to the Argus uh, mid POV of course. I just wanted to quickly explain what happens on a, on a roam of that sort. And again, roaming is good in mid, but you gotta do it at correct timings, right? You see me where I roamed, I roamed only after I pushed my wave in and when the Countess was coming back to base, making it pretty hard for the Countess to really track me. Now, this is something really nice about Argus, he can drop four rivers and he can get it back up without having any issues. Now, the Kai can actually probably not really force my flash, but he can probably do a bit more damage than he did there if he just saves his jump to a point where like he only jumps once I use my pillar to get up to mid lane, right? I do however think that it really doesn't do much for him, like I, I take some damage but my rampage honestly was also hovering me so it doesn't do that much. This is where I mean where like you see I am trying to deal damage to this countess but because she also has this occult crest, which restores her health. Uh, it's really not that easy to kill her, unless you probably have another layer of CC, which is the Rampage Road, for example, right? Or I just full combo her with the ult and hit everything. So this is where I mean that Argus wants to also scale, right? 
Uh, you see me not pushing this wave, even though the Countess did reset. The reason for this is I want to get the 1200, uh, 1200 gold item. Uh, building into the Mega Cosm, that would be really really nice because it's usually very greedy to get a 1200 base early on in the game. But because I've been doing well at managing my waves where it's always on my side, uh, I can do this. I can easily uh, be able to uh, greed for this, not only because Countess is not that strong early on, but also because I am doing pretty well at taking control of how my wave is doing. Now, because I know next wave I'm going to be resetting, all I'm probably going to do for this next wave is, if I remember correctly, what I should do is fully shove this wave by dropping E and R and B. And because the Countess is looking to path towards left side, I am just going to take right side river and probably just base, or maybe, just maybe, uh, try to poke out this Grux to make my Shinbi play the game. I do decide to opt for the Grux gang here, however, I should probably call it off right here once the Grux goes back. I know there's a ward right here, I've seen this ward being placed, I'm pretty sure, when uh, when at, at some point when I was looking at the map. I will still decide to go for this, and uh, probably not the smartest play by me, I missed my stun. I tried to uh, pillar myself up, it did not work, so I dodged the, the pull basically, so I had to blink out. So we have to decide to blow a lot more resources than needed to uh, kill this Grux. Now we do trade one for one and I also burn Flash. But the good thing about this is all, the entire wave, the entire wave that the Grux is going to lose. Because I push that wave and I reset the map state for, or the lane state for my uh, Shimbi. Uh, there I managed to luckily escape the Countess. Uh, by stunning her around the corner and then pillaring so she could not, uh, she stays slow and she cannot get in range to ult me or anything. So that really worked out well to a point where I also don't die, right? So in the end, if I had to give my honest feedback on that is I forced a little bit too much, but it still works out, although we wasted two ults and one blink, which is mine, and we only traded one for one. The good thing about that is that again he misses xp and he misses uh he also misses uh gold and my shimbi has a freeze here so the lane state is actually looking pretty nice on the for the shimbi so that's why i would take something like that right uh we trade fang Tooth for mini prime which is completely fine uh the reason why i want to keep touching up on this offline matchup the reason why i would also take this is because the shimbi scales the shimbi is is required to scale, so uh, I am down to give a little bit for the Shimbi to be able to play the game. Now, unfortunately, because I did use my blank, I do end up dying in this gank, and I don't know if my Rampage does trade one for one, he needs to be careful here, he might be able to, but the Murdoch's also coming, uh, he should jump on and kill him, but yeah, he's dead here. Uh, so it's a two for one, it's not great, but this is basically what we get for helping the Shambi and forcing a little bit too much. You see where like we're sitting pretty comfortable and now we are we're still fine. We're still completely fine. We're still ahead by you know, we're still chilling. I'm pretty sure I'm I'm just slightly ahead on CS. I did roam twice, so that's why the CS is pretty close. Uh, I probably should have like eight more CS or maybe maybe 12 so that's why my CS is not that high, but overall, I'm pretty sure I'm ahead on XP. I don't know why the camera keeps bugging out. Yeah, I'm just slightly ahead on XP. I'm also ahead on on uh, on gold. Here I roam again. I'm trying to uh, make life miserable for the side lanes. I don't really care about winning my lane. It's a Countess. If the Countess goes 0 and 5, it still does not matter. I genuinely mean it, by the way, a Countess going on 5 is still going to be a Countess. So we just need to get wins on the side lanes here. We need to roam. We need to roam when it's correctly. This is not a perfect roam by any means, because look, you can see the Countess right here. Um, just basically shoving an entire wave under me. I again missed some CS, so probably we're like just about even now on CS. Yeah, we're 81 to 81, but I'm roaming. Unlike this Countess, I'm roaming. The Countess wants to scale, so she cannot really roam. Uh, so I need to take advantage of this. I need to uh, just constantly roam. I know that my Rampage is coming here, but my Rampage just decides to do River buff instead. 
That's why I actually walked to this side of the jungle. So unfortunately, my rampage just didn't try to get the river and let me get it because it was a green buff. And he just uh, focused the Countess. We would have killed this Countess earlier, but luckily the Countess does not respect the rampage and walks straight through mid lane again and ends up dying. Now what that Countess does when she dies is she gives up the two count. My my Rampage is able to uh, take the two count. Maybe if he did, the, the phase actually could have stole it. And that is only because the Countess is in respect, right? Now, of course, I had nothing. I had no mana. I was Oom. So we have to reset. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the build. I did start Azure component. Uh, basically, this is a stacking component where you need 400 stacks and then you gain a percent of your magical uh, power, uh, depending on how much mana you have in total. Uh, I really like this on Argus because he does use a lot, a lot of mana. What that means though, however, it is pretty weak early on because, I, like, it doesn't do as much as a completed item would, right? So uh, I would have had this Mega Cosm a little bit earlier, and maybe when I was fighting in the Countess here, she would probably... Uh, have a better chance to die, but I I rather play like this. I rather just uh, cl clear waves whenever I need to clear waves. I'm not trying to really uh, beat a Countess in lane again in a 1v1 scenario. The Countess can actually, like, if played correctly, the Countess can, like, trade 1v1 against me. Like, although she is a scaling champ, I generally much rather prepare playing the countess in this matchup apart for like the first like five levels that's a really good uh, q from the countess but my rampage is there and he is able to uh wait and hold for his rock to where the countess comes back the bad thing about this matchup again is that uh, you're a countess and i'm an argus so that means i'm easier uh, i'm harder to get hit and you are easier to get hit by junglers and which is why you see a lot a lot of the time the the rampage getting successful successful ganks on the three times he did come we always managed to get something going again her dying there makes her miss an entire wave and also allows my rampage to invade because the enemy mid laner is dead right now of course i couldn't again roam because i was low and i didn't have much mana so that's why i like shoved the wave and as you can see this mid lane tower on the map right here is pretty damn low Basically, anytime this Countess thrones or now tries to uh, fight, and if she does die when she tries to fight, this mid tower is probably gonna fall at any point. We we are going to get the second Fang Tooth here, mainly because I am coming off reset, and instead of just going mid lane, I decide to uh, help the team with with Raptor. And honestly, the Argus is so good at taking objectives; it it's kind of insane. Uh, this is not something I usually build on Argus, but I am going for Tainted Scepter now. It is overall, if you look at their comp, all five of these champs are going to be healing. You have the Countess passive heal, you have the Chimera healing with the stacks, you have the Grux passive, which is also healing, you have the Phase passive, which is also healing, and my guess is he also has Wellspring, there it is, and probably an ADC who's going to be building, uh, Healing items as well, or not healing, lifesteal items, I'm sorry. Now, you can see that I'm starting to chunk now, so that is pretty good. I do pop my soul bear not only to give me a shield, but also to heal. Unfortunately, I missed my entire ult, making it actually pretty bad of a trade. I know she's sitting there because I saw her VFX around the wall. Uh, I need to play max range. She does blink on me and ult me, getting that health back. And we actually do trade. That was a uh, pretty well played for the Countess. But I also just walked up into her. Uh, not walked up. I I ran into the uh, the wave ability. The I forgot her the name. The shadow uh, slip. Sh no, I don't. I I honestly don't know. But yeah, I, I walked into her uh, her ability and I ended up dying as well. If I just played a little bit more careful and or if I just hit my any of my old shots, uh, I I wouldn't have traded there. But her dying here is, does what I, what I did mention is going to do, and that is, they're gonna lose mid tower. Uh, my my twin blast is gonna get mid tower because it's very low, 
Mike Wimless is uh, 150 CS, he's 0 and 2, and he already collected one tower on the left, and now he's going to collect another tower in mid lane. So this Twimblast is actually like, he is uh, gaming on some gold. Now, because I know that my dual lane is in mid, instead of going mid, guys, you gotta read the map and you gotta decide that, hey, it's time to not go mid, it's time to go left lane and just let the team play uh, whatever they wanna do over there in the right side of the map. Now, any other person would also just instantly shove this wave and roam to help the team on Raptor, or not on Raptor, on Prime. However, the thing is, my team should not do this uh, this fang tooth. If you look at how low the rampage is, this is never a fight that you want to take, right? This is something that you should just reset for and then go for. Because I should never push this wave. You can see if I decide, I, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go back like 10 or 20 seconds to explain exactly why we should never start this objective. As soon as I show up here in mid wave, I think uh, I went back 30 seconds, by the way, I can go further back. You can see that this Murdoch actually just cannot step up. The Murdoch has done, has gotten no CS in basically the last 40 seconds. He cannot even step up in this lane. I am just permanently freezing this. As soon as I see him roaming, I will start hitting this wave. And this is when he starts roaming, right? So I'm just starting to push the wave. And as you can see, he roams, he does get a kill with the snipe, of course, it is uh, a Meridoc snipe. Uh, and I also peek in to see where the uh, Meridoc is coming. Uh, this time, I know he's coming back, but the play's already gone where, like, the enemy team got mini prime. So now, freezing here is less important and also uh, gold buff spawn. So instead of just staying here and just keeping the freeze going, because I also uh, know that... I could also be hit now, because after this play is gone, I could be roamed on by the Chimera, who just resets, or the Faze that just comes back to help him, right? Or even the Countess. So me just uh, keeping a freeze there, it's a little risky. So what do I do? I push the wave, I get gold, I get the tree camp, and I get blue buff. Uh, I wish my Rampage got his four. I know this is a little weird seeing uh, someone else take camps at 18 minutes, but... I'll start explaining why it's not that bad. Um, the tree camp, for one, is not that important for the jungler. I don't mind when my tree camp is gone as uh, when I'm playing jungle. Of course, it has to be past like 15 minutes minimum. Uh, the tree camp doesn't really give you that much XP. Your XP camps are your four camp right here, the inner camp on blue side, and the two camp, your inner camp in red side. Basically, those are the camps that you don't want to take from your jungler. So try not to take those early on in the game. You can you can take the outer camps, which are the five and the three. And also, sometimes it's fine to get a blue buff or a red buff if you're the carry or mid laner. Mid laner, if you're ahead, right? If you're fed, in which case I am fed, and uh, that's why I kind of took it. Now I do opt for a tainted scepter again. I do have it completed. I am starting to work on Kostika. Uh, the team is fighting here. They do kill my Rampage, who did not decide to blink or ult. Uh, my Rampage didn't have to die there. If you paid attention, he had both his blink and ult. He just did it pretty, pretty late. We do trade the junglers, though, so we do get the jungler killed. And this is third Raptor. So basically, this is a Raptor fight where we are 3v4, because the Grux is not here yet. And this is also third Raptor for us. We do not really want to hold the objective instantly. What we want to do is force them to peek without a tank, right? Because they don't have a tank. We can just burst anyone who comes in. So, sorry for this camera. I know uh, looking at the Argus is not going to be great. Or the Argus Cape, at least. It's not really a good camera angle for you guys to watch. But yeah, we, we just want to bait, let someone come in. Uh, kill the person who comes in that it is suddenly uh, not a, a big disadvantage for the enemy team where like they are gonna be also fighting a man down and after killing someone after we bait the corner uh, we are able to take the third fang tooth with the damage of TB, Shimbi and of course uh, Argus who can just hold the RMB on this raptor and we're gonna get our third stacking raptor so now we have three raptors 20 minutes into the game 
I'm gonna reset. I have 1.4k gold. This is gonna give me close to my item, which is Caustica. I'm gonna get the pen item and another 900 scepter. Uh, and now I'm just really damn strong. If you look at my build, I also ha I went for the soul bearer crest, of course. Uh, I don't need to go stasis here. I rather just uh, get the get the shield to be able to move faster. And what I mean by that is, you look at their top, right? They have a uh, uh, what's her name? Sorry, a phase, a countess, a Kai, and a Grox. They're all melee champs. The part, the phase, of course, but the phase tries to slow you, right? So just having a move speed option here is like really, really, really nice. Unfortunately, RTB does die, and the enemy team does start getting like very, very aggressive into our jungler, into our jungle, and. Uh, Luckily, uh, they send it a bit too much. I managed to kill the Chimera with my first tick of damage. I do pillar behind the Chimera to not allow the enemy team to basically just run in alongside the Chimera. That allowed the Chimera to be out of position and we could just all just fight the Chimera, right? So that's kind of why... Uh, this is how Argus wants to play. When, when they're all trickling in from one area, which they were, they were all trickling in from uh, the fog wall behind tier one and tier two in mid to our red side. Argus can really shine there because he can pillar in a choke and just we just focus one person. So that's why someone like Countess where she can just blink through it and just focus on a single target, force them to have to uh, not fight in an AOE in front of the Argus, but instead they have to fight on a specific location where the Countess is fighting. That's when uh, that's when the, the, the Countess becomes really good against the Argus. Thankfully, my Rampage here also gives me blue buff because I'm pretty massive. I do finish my Caustica here, and I'm probably going to go for Crown Last Item, just get that massive AP spike. Uh, my duel, I have two people on duel lane here. I have the Rampage and I also have the TB. So that means I also have to hover the TB and Rampage because I know their dueling is on duo side. That that also means that uh, we cannot really play for prime yet until the TB bases, which is now when the TB is basing. We're gonna push mid, we're gonna get pressure in mid, and now we should have a room to play for prime. Our damage is pretty insane. We have Bellica support as well. That's a pretty, a very good damage support. Uh, we also have a Shibi pushing high up on offlane. So we have a, a lot of control here in the enemy jungle, as you can see, B is very high up. They need to be a little bit careful here, though. We do force the Cleanse Curse from uh, the ADC. I do get trapped, I didn't pay attention, I also blink, and I get blink ulted by, uh, not blink ulted, my blink gets interrupted or followed per se, by the uh, Countess. Not really great positioning from me. I was uh, very close to killing the ADC, but I should have respected it a bit more. Maybe I should have just blinked a bit earlier as well. I should have never died there, if I'm being honest. I just held onto my blink for like a second too, uh, too long. But because they used a lot on me, it kind of still allowed my team to play this fight. But overall, as a mid lane, like a, a mid lane like fight perspective, as a mid laner, I would say that the only bad thing that I did here was just blink late, right? I did a lot of damage to where I chunked the ADC. And after that, I should have just left. Unfortunately, I did not see the trap. The, the trap is what fucked me, right? The Murdoch trap did fuck me. I did not pay attention that he placed a trap right behind me. So when I walked back, I was stuck in place for a bit longer than I I probably hoped I would be stuck there for. And that kind of would allow them to kill me. Luckily, again, uh, they did use a lot on me because they are behind. So usually when they have to kill someone on our team, they're going to be using a lot more resources. They used Kyle, they used the Countess ult on me. And that allowed my team to also uh, just engage on them because a Countess can only queue back. And she also has no abilities after killing me. A Chimera who just jump ulted me, he does not have a way to get out, right? So that kind of allowed them to uh, basically uh, clean up the fight. Now, this is the I, I, this is uh, where I decide to stay mid, and you're gonna see the reason why I decide to stay mid. I want my team to start uh, baiting for Fangtooth, and I want to stay on map. W what I mean by staying on map, I just if I stay on map, they think our team is not doing an objective. 
And the reason behind that is because Argus does so much damage to objectives that uh, they would never, our team would never force the objective, right? But because uh, because I can push in wave and force them to respond to that wave, uh, that's going to allow my team to basically do about 5k damage to uh, to the uh, the objective before I start roaming. And then once I roam, they're gonna be too late at realizing that oh hey, they're actually just already set up for this fang tooth. The mid wave was just making sure we have more pressure, and it also allowed uh, them to burst those objectives when the Ar when the Argus came in. Now, this fight was a little risky. I'm gonna play it aerial because uh, I didn't really go over it. As soon as I roam in, the enemy team does realize that you'll see everyone on our team here is uh, kind of stunning the Chimera. The objective is about 1.2k, I think, right here. So a few more damage from me and the smite from this guy. This guy is getting stunned, so we should be able to uh, secure the objective. And there we go, we do that. Now we all focus the Countess first because the Countess went in a little bit too early. I do all the Countess, I also hold the phase, and now we just clean up on the Chimera right here, who is the last target. Three people dead, we also get the third Fang Tooth, and I am quickly resetting, making sure this right wave is pushed, and we are going straight into uh, the prime objective. Meanwhile, my team is trying to, uh, I believe, kill the uh, ADC, which we don't really get to. So they just want to push mid wave, and after pushing mid wave, we should look at this objective right here. So he's also setting up a little bit of wars there for us. I'm gonna just again push this wave, make sure that uh, we have waves all set up for this next objective. The unfortunate thing about this is we can start it. It's just a little risky because our burst is not that insane. We just have a lot of constant damage, but not really like insane, insane burst. But that's why we cannot really start the objective just quite yet. So instead of just starting Prime, we, we just uh, push right wave again, and we also just find a nice little blue buff for us. Now, because both our Shibby and our Rampage are back up, now this is when we can pull the objectives. Before we even pull the objectives though, we take the enemy side plan so they cannot just jump in. If they want to jump in, they gotta use a blink, right? That's the whole point about it. Make sure that plant is removed if you want to start an objective. It is actually pretty damn good. Now we still have, of course, the prime bird. So this objective is going to go much, much faster than uh, the other objective. So we can just stick this one out. I'm going to play inside the pit. Again, why I want to play inside the pit is because that is going to allow the enemy team... No, it's not really going to allow the enemy team to go on me unless they force a blink. Uh, the Kai is unfortunately not that tanky, so he is actually just gonna straight up die to my entire combo with the uh, Mega Cosm and also the Primal Burn. He does die, my team finds out the... not finds out, but my team kills the Countess and the Murdoch. The Rux decides to DC because this game is pretty much over. It's a little cringe that he DCs, does not try to play it out, but the game is pretty much over at this point. We have 3.3... 3.5k gold and going up some as well so i could just also just finish my build here with crown and a, uh, an intellect potion but we don't need to the game's again we're, we're just about to end it the game's pretty much over and that is basically how you you know how i play argus at least right we we try to get a good a good few rounds we try to take control of how we want to play the wave and control the wave how we want to uh, make sure that this guy is in a CS deficit. Uh, we're at sitting at 290, he's sitting at 174. Uh, most of it is because of how I was clearing waves, of course, how I was uh, setting up my jungler to also gank my wave because the Countess always was out of position or just didn't respect. She's a Countess, she has to respect a little bit early on. I couldn't really kill the Countess too much early on, Slightly because of the obelisk crest where uh, she gets a lot of health back, but yeah, you don't need to kill your, your laner. You can always roam and find opportunities on the side of the lanes. That's kind of what I did. I gave a lead to dual lane and I also uh, made sure that my off laner had a good wave state for herself. And we also made the Grux miss some CS and that's 
basically how this game went. Hopefully this video has been insightful or helpful to you guys in any way, shape or form. If you have liked it, let me know in the comment section be down below and let me know what you want to see next on these kind of VOD reviews, if it's a specific role or a specific hero. I will catch you gamers another one. So by then, have a good rest of your day. Peace out.